YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. Here's a fun game. Apply the Pokemon type classification system to planets and see if the outcome is in any way plausible. For example, water and life are two of Earth's most unique features, so perhaps we can whimsically say that the Earth is a water grass type poke planet like a cosmic lotad. Okay, so first up is the hypothetical steel type planet, the iron poke planet. An iron planet is a hypothetical type of planet dominated by an iron core. Mercury is the closest our system comes to having an iron planet, with its iron core accounting for about 42% of its volume, compared to Earth's 17%. Iron planets could form in one of two ways. They could accrete naturally close into a star where the protoplanetary disk is very iron rich. Or they may be remnants of standard metal silica planets whose mantles were blown off in a giant impact event, like what we think happened to Mercury. Now we may one day find true iron planets or super mercuries whose iron content approaches 100%. For now, all we can do is speculate as to what such worlds would look like. It's likely that the abundance of metallic iron on an iron planet will lead to a chemically reducing environment, possibly giving rise to fields of diamonds and lakes and oceans of iron and nickel carbonyl. Geographically speaking, such a setup isn't all that stable, so our hypothetical planet here will need to have ongoing volcanism. This would produce carbon monoxide, which would help keep everything super toxic to humans, but very, very stable. Kepler-70b may well be an iron planet. It orbits its host star every six hours, is three quarters the size of Earth, but has roughly the same density, implying that its iron core must be substantial. Not steel enough for you? Try this, the carbon planet. Carbon planets are planets that contain more carbon than oxygen and will form if a protoplanetary disk has a high carbon to oxygen ratio. Such a ratio may exist within the galactic core as stars there are fairly carbon rich. Similarly, planets around white dwarfs, neutron stars and pulsars would make good carbon planet host candidates. Internally, carbon planets would look much like regular terrestrial planets except made of compounds of carbon, as shown. Check out the steel core and the substratum of diamond. Is it just me? Or is diamond common as muck on exoplanets? Anyways, volcanism here could produce mountains of silicon carbide and diamonds. Rivers of crude oil would flow across a tar-covered planetary surface. If temperatures were low enough, gases could photochemically synthesize into long-chain hydrocarbons, which could rain down to the surface through a smog-like atmosphere of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Cool, but again, very, very toxic. Let's pick another type, rock perhaps, and let's ask the question, can our rocky polka planet be composed entirely of rock, i.e. no iron core, just one massive homogeneous rocky silicate mantle. One way such a coreless rock type polka planet could form is if it accretes from material where all the metallic iron is bound into the silicate mineral crystals. This would stop the inside of the planet differentiating and forming an iron core. Instead, the iron would be trapped and dispersed throughout the giant mantle. Now, usually no iron core means no magnetic field, but consider this. Magnesium oxide is rocky here on Earth, but inside the mantle of a coreless super-Earth where the temperatures and pressures are high enough, it could exist in the form of a liquid metal. This could give rise to a magnetic field, an important element needed to make a planet habitable. We think coreless planets may form in the cooler regions further from their host stars, which is also where we expect to find water ice planets, leading some scientists to speculate that a large portion of water worlds could be coreless worlds as well. Speaking of water ice planets, meet hypothetical planetary type number four, the ice type polka planet. These are planets covered by an icy surface and a global cryosphere. Think larger versions of Pluto or Hoth. Depending on their temperatures, they may be composed of water ice, CO2 and ammonia ice or methane ice. Interestingly, if an ice planet were warmed by a molten core or experienced internal heating due to gravitational interactions with another object, a subsurface liquid ocean may well be present. Life could evolve in such an ocean. However, subsurface plants and microorganisms would favor chemosynthesis over photosynthesis as sunlight would be blocked by the icy surface layer. So yeah, an ice water polka planet, if you will. Ogle 2005BLG390LB is a possible example of an ice planet. Weirdly, ice planets needn't be cold. Take Lisa 436B, for example. 
It's a Neptune-sized planet that orbits its star roughly every two days. The planet is very hot due to its proximity to its whole star and under high pressure due to its mass. The water on this world remains frozen in the form of exotic ice phases like Ice 7 and Ice 10, despite the temperatures being over 700 Kelvin. Gliese 436b, the ice fire type polka planet. Man, space is weird. Now with all this talk of ice, let's meet hypothetical planetary type number 5, the water type polka planet. An ocean planet or water world like Camino or GJ1214b is a planet whose mass is primarily composed of water. Such worlds may feature solid water in their bowels, liquid oceans hundreds of kilometers thick, and atmospheres of gaseous water vapor. Planets love themselves a bit of migration, so a water type planet may well be the remnants of an ice planet that migrated inwards and thawed out. Alternatively, imagine an Earth-like planet whose tectonic activity has stopped due to, say, the depletion of naturally radioactive elements. As a result, erosion would grind the continents down and leave a featureless world covered in global oceans of uniform depth. The writer Stephen L. Gillette calls this scenario the cue ball world. Now, where there's water, there may well be life, but life underwater with no easy access to metals, no electricity or fire for metallurgy will likely never achieve the same level of technical intelligence that can be achieved on land planets. So too much water means no internet, which bums me out given that I'm coming at you in a series of ones and zeros. Fire type polka planets. Lava planets like Mustafar are planets covered in global lava flows. Such worlds would probably be located very close to their host stars, where the temperatures and tidal forces are such that the planet's surface will never fully solidify. Alternatively, planets with very eccentric orbits that periodically pass very close to their host stars would undergo regular tidal distortions. This would cause internal heating, melting the rocks into magma, and volcanic eruptions could coat the surface in lava. Kepler-78b, nicknamed the Hell Planet, is a possible lava planet orbiting its host star every 8.5 hours and experiencing temperatures in excess of 2000 Kelvin. Finally, planetary type number 7, the ground type polka planet. So if you're a planet and you're all ground and no water, chances are you're a desert planet like Tatooine or Arrakis. Computer simulations modeling desert planets have shown that they may not be as barren as one might immediately think. For one thing, their habitable zones may be much larger than that of Earth-like planets. Lack of surface water means less snow and ice that can reflect sunlight back into space. As such, the planet may absorb more heat, resist global freezing and expand the outer limits of its habitable zone. Similarly, less heat will be trapped, helping the planet avoid a runaway greenhouse effect, in essence expanding the inner boundary of its habitable zone as well. But life needs water, right? Yes, but these models deal with the lack of surface water. Groundwater is not taken into account. So a desert planet may well have plenty of water. It would just be relatively hard to get at. Furthermore, the models indicate the possible presence of polar water ice. Life on a desert planet would certainly be tough, but not impossible, which is great considering Earth, due to the sun's increasing luminosity, will become a desert planet in about one billion years. Fun times. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.